What's up, everybody? Welcome back to our luxury menswear tier list of like every brand, almost a hundred of them. We are getting really, really close to the end here, and there are some insane heavy hitters coming up, including maybe the highest luxury brand that has ever existed. So without further ado, let's dive in. So we've got all of our tiers here, starting with S tier. There are only two designers in there at this point still, which is actually kind of surprising to me. A, filling out a bit more. I guess I'm a bit picky, apparently. B, C, then we get into the Marshalls clearance rack. And finally, the Forbidden Dungeon, which is reserved for brands that just you should never wear. Even if the clothes are kind of good, like maybe Dolce & Gabbana sometimes is good, Alexander Wang, whatever. They just suck so much that you shouldn't wear them. So that's how the tiers break out. But our first designer today that we're looking at, Hermes. 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 All right, I actually, I think they do runway shows. I just don't know how often. Uh, apparently pretty often because we've already got fall 2023 here. Cover image looking actually fairly interesting. So Hermes is a brand that you can tell the construction's good, the materials are good. I've just always found them really, really boring on the menswear side. I can respect, you know, the Birkin, all that good stuff. They've definitely built a very solid brand. They don't need any advice from me, but like, I don't know, I care about the clothes, right? But I'm actually fairly intrigued by what I'm seeing here. A very interesting, the color is like bluish gray I'm not crazy about. But the treatment's actually very cool. This giant, like, Rick Owensy flat pocket right here at the front is very interesting. This little bit of hardware looks a little bit crafty, honestly, but I like that they're trying something here. I do appreciate that. And then some, like, monk strap chunky boots. Also quite nice. I'm really not mad about this first look here. Next up... Still actually more interesting than what I've come to expect from Hermes. Interesting cuts here, interesting layering. A couple big flat pockets, a sort of asymmetrical diagonal zip here. Interesting collar, that's kind of an atypical collar. A lot of brands are doing these medicine bags these days. And then these boots again. And some slim pants. You don't actually see like slim or skinny pants that much on the runway anymore. Or are they sweatpants? That kind of looks like a, a knit jogger hem there. I don't like that as much. But overall, I actually find the uh, cut quite flattering of those. Very nice. A sort of, not quite a short sleeve, like a half sleeve sweater. The hardware is all very interesting. It's actually, it's a lot more hard edged than you would expect from Hermes. This is giving kind of... Um, I don't know, industrial vibes, you know? A little wallet chain, because why not? Some leather pants and some nice nice boots, of black boots of some kind. It's actually a really nice look. Hmm. This one hits my eye a little less pleasantly, but I can still appreciate what they're doing here. It's an interesting take on a duffel coat. I just think the fit and proportions are a bit weird. But the treatments are all pretty cool. Uh, I think these are the same pants as the last look and same boots as well. Very interesting stuff. You've got some kind of embellishments here inside the leather. Very curious to see how they pulled that off. That's not something you see every day. Very Rick Owens kind of like um, island shirt vibes here with this button down that comes around the neck like a turtleneck. Yeah, these knit hems I don't love though. I do like the fit of the, the pants otherwise. Ugh. Gross sportswear parka, like Heli Hansen type of thing. And now in the light and in this color, these pants are much less appealing. This is kind of like what I expect from Hermes menswear. Just kind of weird and a little uh, unappealing. All right, similar look in brown. I like it less here, but I still don't dislike it. Some weird gorb core stuff. I do like the lapel collar of this vest. Um, and it's an, in an interesting fabrication as well. But that's all I really like about this look here. Very leather heavy. 
interesting stuff going on on the inside of this collar as well that we're just seeing for the first time. Ew, terrible, like, they're like the sneakers that like Gucci and brands like that used to make before they got good at making sneakers. Getting into some tailoring, some knitwear. Again, this is more like standard Hermes, what I've come to expect, just kind of like good, but not like fashion, not like forward looking necessarily. That's nice, this little connector here at the collar. A bit slouchy. Yeah, I like this. Um, I like this quite a bit. It's a very sharp suit, double-breasted, but without like the huge pullover flap. And I'm sure that bag is insanely expensive and grail-worthy to bag people. Ooh, very cool, like embossed, printed, whatever. They've done some sort of treatment to the leather to give it that check on the inside. That's a very novel take on it. And all this stuff, I like the color combination as well. I like the boots, the monk strap boots here, but I'd like to see more variety in all this stuff. This is a weird piece, the quarter zip. And the fit isn't great either. It kind of reminds me of like Fear of God or something. This is fu fine. It's just kind of whatever. This is the kind of stuff that I just don't understand why someone would pay like eight grand for this coat. You know what I mean? Like, is it? it's not that special. And we're starting to peter out here. Like, I'm not loving any of this as much as some of those earlier looks. This coat doesn't hit quite as well in a khaki. Okay, we get this in a full, full-sleeved version as opposed to a vest. I actually like it. I do like that jacket. All these pants, though. I just think it was a, it was a bad call to give him that um, knit ankle. Weird coat. Very weird. The fit is just all wrong odd all right yeah i think i think i get it i think we can call it here yeah all right let's see hermes here so that was interesting it was better than i've seen from them in the, in the past in the past i probably would have put them like very low c tier i think but it was better than that like if i think about these casablanca bowed collections they kind of made me mad quite a few times. None of that made me mad. Some of it bored me. Some of it I liked quite a bit. So, like, I think it was about as good, maybe slightly better than Saint Laurent, but not as good as Bottega. Yeah, B tier for Hermes. That that really surprises me, but I'm happy to see it. I was always waiting to, to get Hermes, and I guess now I do just, like, that much more. All right, and next up, who do we got? Heron Preston. Uh, off light is an insult I heard for Heron Preston many moons ago, and it always stuck with me. It's just like uh, this kind of streetwear, luxury workwear thing that Virgil pioneered, and Heron always had trouble kind of differentiating himself within that, which I always felt bad about because I thought he did do things well, but then I've seen some stuff lately that has made me question the entire endeavor. So let's see where Heron Preston is at these days. All right, I feel like it's not often you get the designer himself as the cover image, but that's what you get with Heron Preston. And our most recent is spring 2023. Looks like a, a lookbook rather than a runway, which is, I'd say, more common for these kind of like streetwear brands. Looks like a, oh no, okay, there's a load more curious how many looks it is. 38. Okay, so it's a fairly full collection. Let's see here. Heron really loves a carpenter pant. These may even be part of the Levi's collab that he did. Wait, I see a canvas carpenter. No, it doesn't say Levi's, so I guess this is a Heron Preston original. Some boots. I hate the pattern on this jacket. It's just very meh. You know what I mean? That's women's wear. Kind of interesting, I guess. Whoa, this is incredibly hood by air to me. Yeah, I just, I'm surprised this is Heron Preston, honestly. Everything is just very whatever. Ooh, I hate that. I hate everything about that. The fit, the treatment, the bleh, bleh. And then suddenly we're in like 90s. 
basketball territory. Yuck. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, the shorts. Uh. Like, I think it's just not for me, is the thing. Ugh. When luxury brands do, like, motocross jackets, it's its own whole thing. I should probably do a video on it at some point, because it's just a vibe, but, like, not in a good way. Here in Preston Racing. What are these sneakers here? Looks like a lot of other things that are out there right now. Oh, man. And this is, like, okay... But does it have a reason to exist? Aren't there a hundred other brands also doing this? And I get that Heron Preston has been doing it for a long time and he deserves his place and he's earned his place there. It's just too bad he went into a space that a hundred people also went into within five years of him also going there. You know, it's just very oversaturated. We're back to the motocross. We get a difference in, in tone you know, color profile. I don't hate it, but again, you could see it on an Alix runway or any of these other brands, right? Off-white, whoever. The color combo here is kind of doing me in. The pants are, are interesting, though. Like, it's like a dyed track stripe. Interesting. Going for, like, a Tommy Hilfiger thing. I actually like this look the most so far, probably. Oh, way weird padded, like motorcycle pants though and the slides it looks like he's like not even wearing them like the fit looks weird this is all just very odd i think yeah this uh man i think i'm done this just makes me it makes me sad honestly for a long time i've been a person that has lifted Heron preston up i appreciate what he does and i think he deserves his place and that's still true it's just the clothes they ain't there you know what i mean so for me, that was, I didn't like any of it. It wasn't as bad as Louis and Givenchy, which we're getting into like, this is making me mad territory. So I'm going to put it like right there, just like a step above those in the clearance bin. And speaking of clearance bins, Kenzo, I'm just kidding. You just, they're on sale a lot because they, they're cheap anyway, and they make lots of product. Kenzo, Nigo from Bape is now designing for Kenzo. They've picked up a lot of steam compared to where they were a couple years beforehand. Let's see what Nigo has been cooking up. All right, I think they just did a show. Yep, Fall 23. So this is hot off the presses from just a couple days ago. And we start off with a tailored look. This feels very Nigo. Honestly, more interesting than you'd expect from Kenzo. I expect Kenzo to be like very, very wearable. And nice, but also, like, kind of boring. You know what I mean? But that, this is a very interesting collar. This is a very interesting cutout here. Nice tie. And then some wild pants. Crazy. Look at the hem, too. Even the shape of them. I don't really know what to make of it, but I'm not mad about it. Got some women's wear. Okay, very Tyler the Creator. You know what I mean? Very golf le fleur. Some leather going around the collar. Very like Wes Anderson. You know what I mean? Like this is a, a Moonrise Kingdom kind of vibe here. It's all nice though. Like I appreciate when someone chooses a specific aesthetic and owns it. It wouldn't be in my closet, but I can fully understand the, the value of it. And it deserves a spot within fashion. This one I'm not crazy about. If you take away, like, the Oxford Prep School tie underneath, it reads as, like, kind of Gucci, kind of lover boy. I don't know. Yeah, this is, like, a drug rug kind of thing. Definitely full-on, like, 60s vibes with the pins. Branded shirt underneath. The hat's cool. The hat's cool. Uh, the shoes are cool as well. These, like, clogs. Like, clogs in the classic sense. Uh, the stuff going on on top, I'm not crazy about, though. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Lots of women's wear. Whoa, a lot of geometry happening here. Usually, I don't like these super, super coordinated looks. But, yeah, the geometry is drawing me in, I have to say. I like it. 
the proportions are all wrong, but I think that's intentional. Okay, that motif is continuing into more of a classic suit, double-breasted. It's a lot. I also don't love pairing it with, like, the kind of, like, white Air Force One type of things. And then this, like, kimono, boxing, smoking jacket, whatever. I don't love I, I kind of wish it was just a suit with a nicer, like, formal shoe and let the geometry carry it, you know what I mean? It's a lot of pieces. Again, I'm not crazy about everything that's going on here. I like the f Western flannel underneath. I like the super wide pants and I like the clogs. I'm liking things individually, which is kind of what Kenzo tries to do because they're a brand, they don't really make their money off of runway looks, you know what I mean? They make their money off of selling individual pieces on the floor of like a, a Saks in Norwalk, Connecticut. You know what I mean? And we've got lots of women's wear. Ooh, this is a rough one. Overalls with like a super tight denim style undershirt. Again, with that off cut and sew geometry. That one doesn't do it for me. But again, there's like a legitimate aesthetic to it at least. Whoa. Faux fur hood. Too much going on, okay? I appreciate the coat. I know there's a customer for it. The overalls, I'm not sure. And then the shirt underneath, none of it matches. And I know, I know it's intentional, I know. But it really does look like a lot of separates just thrown together. I don't love the fit of this jacket, but I like the idea of it. I actually really like the pants, the parachute pants. That's the kind of thing I could see wanting in my closet. Oh, I know that's the women's wear, but I really like the varsity poncho. That is an interesting idea. That, not so much. That's, that's bad. That was bad. Okay. Some very weird stuff happening here. But there's interesting elements thrown in despite, and it, it makes me want to keep looking. The proportions are so weird. Cool, at least in this case, you know? Whoa. Whoa like a denim jacket cape. And these big flowing denim pants are very cool. Very cool. Like there's some innovation to these that I really wasn't expecting. The kind of like dazed and confused era vibes. It's not my cup of tea. Nice tie. Very cool. But man, I'm appreciating a lot of these elements. Really nice jacket like an aviator jacket, classic style. I think I've got a call soon. I don't want to spend too long on this. Whoa. All like alpha industries, but in like this kind of like Japanese classic style. Very interesting stuff. All right, let's call it there. All right, what a collection that was. I think that was the best I've seen from Nigo at Kenzo yet. I think he's been there at least a couple seasons now. Um, but it really seems like he's coming into his own. I'm in incredibly pleasantly surprised by that. I get it was very branded, very wearable. You could see that it was made to be a bunch of separates on the floor to Norwalk, Connecticut, Saks Fifth Avenue, but there was thought put into how they were constructed and there was a commitment to aesthetic that I do appreciate, even if it was like kind of Wes Anderson costume design sometimes. It's easily beat here. I think it is right around there. It's doing what it does incredibly well in my point of view. I think if they left some of the super wearable, heavily branded separates behind and actually leaned into the aesthetic more, it could go even further. But I get that why they can't do that. You know, it's, ju it's just business, as they say. Moving on. Takahiro Miyashita, the soloist. That's a mouthful, but a very well-respected Japanese brand, I believe. Not someone I know a ton about, but let's see what the soloist has cooking. All right, the soloist. We do have spring 2023 here. Okay, perfect. Kind of like a sketchy trompe l'oeil style, I guess. I saw Kurt Cobain. Yep, name checked here. Or dresses for comfort. Okay, so leaning into that grunge Kurt Cobain women's wear kind of thing. Very weird. <laughs> This is very, very weird. It's, um, it's a choice, you know what I mean? Very conceptual, but is this all it is? I don't have much, if, 
if this is what it is, I don't have a whole lot to say about it. it feels kind of like a Central St. Martin's kind of concept to me. I appreciate the artisanship, the literal artisticness of it. Okay, hey, <laughs> we've got other stuff. Oh, it's literally the same piece, but now it's got different treatment. So now you've got a plaid, and then you've got a hoodie. Whoa. Okay, so there is some actual other stuff going on here. Okay, so this is like a turned around hoodie, reverse hoodie, interesting. Sort of parka body bag vest. This is very cool. These treatments as well, like creepy, you know what I mean? Okay, really nice boots too. Whoa, we get it quilted as well. The shorts, oh, I love the shorts actually. Okay, this collection is heating up. Some women's wear styles, reverse cardigan. Mmm, nice dress, or a skirt, rather. Mmm, ooh, kind of like Yoji Yamamoto vibes. You've got some sort of, like, leather jacket underneath as well. This took a turn. I was thinking I was going to have to write this off as, like, a clearance burger. You know what I mean? But this is starting to look very, very cool. If this ends right about now, it's going to be like left in that really interesting place of being like, I want more. You know what I mean? Definitely leaning into the, the reverse motif. I love like the 80s punk, late 70s punk vibes here. Oh, we're almost done. I want more. Oh, that is cool. There's just so much going on. The tied off red, it's a nice pop of color. The shorts are still great. The boots are really nice. Wow. The way it transforms is so cool. What a collection. It took us on a journey. Okay. So I thought that was pretty fantastic, but at only 24 looks, it makes you wonder, was it fantastic because there wasn't more to it? If it went further, would it have all fallen apart? So I want to give credit where it's due. It's at least B tier, but how high is it? You know what I mean? I think, oh man. See, I have trouble putting it in this territory where they're just really owning what they do. But I do think it's like right in the like Vivian Westwood territory. It's a really solid showing for the soloist and I'm going to make sure I pay more attention going forward because I found that incredibly interesting. And next up, who do we got? Who do we got? Oh, Wales Bonner. Interesting. So Grace Wales Bonner has been rumored to be taking over at Louis Vuitton. Uh, they just had the guy from Kid Super do their new collection, which was kind of weird. But apparently it's still a possibility that Wales Bonner goes there. So we've got to take a look and see, is that potential appointment deserved. Let's find out. All right, we have got a new collection again, hot off the presses from just a few days ago. And let's see what we got. We got a runway. This reminds me of the um, Balenciaga Couture collection. The, the set feels very reminiscent of that. Okay, it's kind of hard to make out from the color grading of the photos, which is unfortunate, but you've got a well-tailored coat with an incredibly interesting neck on the undershirt. And these, I'm guessing, are an Adidas collab for the sneakers. Perfectly decent opener. Hmm. A nice uh, linen, I'm guessing, on this suit. Something you don't see all that often anymore. The boots are incredibly interesting. Yeah, I like those a lot. It's not blowing me away, but I like it. She's always done really well with these super tight knits. I have one in my closet. Um, it's very tight, but it looks good, I think. Um, interesting pants. So if she goes to Louis Vuitton, it's going to be a very different look to that place. You know what I mean? Mm, this coat. Do I like it? I think I respect it, but I don't like it, if that makes sense. Interesting. Okay. Huh. It's a very unique kind of like classic take on a varsity jacket. It's like it's not the modern interpretation of a varsity jacket, which is cool. Again, the boots are looking good. Solid cut on the pants. 
Uh huh. Okay. I can't even tell. It's some sort of like doppled fabric, belted. This is like a classic blue for Wales Bonner. Really nice cut on those, but then it falls apart in the bottom half. Whoa, that's different. It is women's wear though, so we'll leave that aside. Still, whoa, blown to hell. I respect it, but I don't like it. I guess I'll leave it at that. And then you're getting into the Adidas stuff, which is just kind of whatever, you know? Interesting stuff, the socks and mules slippers is an interesting combo. I love this old like Ivy League type stuff. I really do. So yeah, I can't I can't hate on it. Interesting, interesting. Oh, that I don't like. Just full stop. Not a fan. Oh, treatment. Just like classic like quilting treatment, but like kind of like melted in a way. Like it was in the microwave too long. Oh, that's cool. I could see like a I don't know the patterns of gives me Gucci, but the tr the use of it and the cut feels kind of like Balenciaga or maybe like Martine Rose or something. I don't know. I guess where I'm landing is that I respect her, but I just don't think everything's fully baked, you know? Yeah, I think I've seen enough. Let's call it there. All right, Wells Bonner, I think she's doing some really interesting stuff. She's definitely not in the Forbidden Dungeon. She's easily made it out of the clearance rack as well. She's also better than this stuff, which while having a couple saving graces was not good. I don't know if it's quite B tier though. I really don't. Uh, I think it's like way up at the top of the C tier, just breaking in on B. And I think that's fair. And I do think it wouldn't be a bad choice to put her in it, Louis Vuitton. I think it would bring a much more like classical luxury structure and look to the house while still keeping some of that vibrancy that Virgil brought. So I'd be, I'd be curious to see how that goes, but let's move on to the very industrial Heliot Emile. I don't know how to pronounce this. They are a mainstay of the Essence sale. Let's see what's going on with Heliot. <laughs> that sounds so wrong, that can't be right. All right, so there is no H-E, that's what I'll, I'll call them, uh, in the directory here. So we've gotta go elsewhere, runway. Oh, here we go. What the? Why? I'm so confused. Okay, anyway. Spring 2023, perfect. Let's take a look. Oh, God, it's not in gallery form. Sorry, y'all. This is going to be painful. So we have got... They, they do lots of, like, industrialized tailoring. Like, imagine if Alix took the roller coaster buckle and just took that conceit, that vibe, and applied it to everything with a tailoring focus. Kind of maybe like if Alexander McQueen licensed the roller coaster buckle, you know? We have lots of little bits of hardware. It maybe is over-engineered. It's a nice cut on the pants, and the boots are incredibly interesting. I would love to have a better idea of what's going on there. This... Uh, looks more like costume design for a weird post-apocalyptic, here we go again, motocross movie. Ah, uh, these are crazy, the shoes. Nice pants once again, though. Is that all we get? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Give me a moment, please. A lot of women here. What do we got here? <laughs> okay, some, like, Rorschach stuff going on. The hoodie feels very, like, off-white to me. Really interesting cut on the jacket. Actually kind of like um, Hyder Ackerman vibes. Very weird combo. Over here, this reads as, like, if Alex and Rick Owens did the nasty and spit out some sort of demon spawn. Uh, not in a bad way, though, even though that sounded pretty bad. This bit of, like, carabiner hardware, I think it's a staple of the brand. I don't know. It all feels like the kind of thing that you would get if you just, like, didn't have quite enough money for, like, Rick Owens grails. Or maybe Alix in that sense. Although I think there's one brand of those two that is you would much rather be compared to, if you know what I mean. 
mm, taking like the Yeezy Gap Coat to the next level. I like the zipper pull editions, but it feels a bit unwearable. Maybe too avant-garde for what it is. Very Rick Owens on the cut of the pants. Okay. A bit more wearable here, but like the tank top style is no good. Is it like too clean? Maybe? Maybe that's what's bothering me. It feels like it needs, it feels like it deserves more edge than it actually has. Nice bag. Other than that, the look doesn't do a whole lot for me. Very Rick Owens banana knit balaclava type thing this bag is just kind of weird like craig green kind of stuff there made there's just like a few too many flavors from other designers going around but none of it is bad you know what i mean except maybe for that okay and that is the end man what a weird one that's gonna be interesting to judge but i'll do my best heliot emile h-e i liked it I liked it more than Alix, which I compared it to quite a bit, but I certainly didn't like it as much as Rick Owens, which I put up in the S tier. I think it broke through to the B tier because everything was very clean and it was of a clear aesthetic and avant-garde while still wearable in a lot of senses. It just didn't always fully hit. But I think, you know where I think it deserves to be? It deserves to be like right in that Alexander McQueen space, where they're doing what they do very well. It's very clean, seemingly well-made. But for a brand that is so edgy, I want to feel that edge. Like, it feels a bit like if you sent, like, a millionaire to a punk club. You know what I mean? Sure, you're at a punk club, and it's dirty and grungy, but you're still a millionaire. You know what I mean? You can never remove the millionaire fully. That was the worst analogy ever. I'm sorry, but it's B-tier. All right, moving right along, we have got to talk about Jill Sander. I had to just do a double take, so I was like, didn't we already look at this? But no, we already looked at And Mulemeester, which I always confuse the two for some reason. Jill Sander, anyway, let's see. So I feel like another brand that's really good at tailoring, if I remember correctly, but honestly, something I've not paid nearly enough attention to. Uh, we've got, are there men in the spring 2023 collection? Because I'd rather not look at like pre-collections and resort collections. I believe we have some men here. Sure, I think. Okay, all right. Um, it looks very like gender fluid. I don't know, it's kind of reminding me of like, man, what does that look like to me? Like OAMC maybe, or kind of like what Kenzo was doing with that really short-lived designer that they had before Nigo. The shoes are like these kind of weird Jack Purcell Converse kind of things. I don't know. I, it didn't do a lot for me. We've got a lot of women's wear. Although, again, I think it's like totally interchangeable from the looks of it. Big, big chain right here. Reminds me of the J.W. Anderson chain loafers. Very nice pockets, but it's nothing to write home about. You know what I mean? And this skirt, whatever this is, apron it's it's okay but i'm not crazy about it and the boots are good you know I'd, I'd wear the hell out of them but they're not like super innovative i don't think Ugh, you've got a tank top with the big chain in it i don't know a lot of this feels very forgettable to me honestly a nice distressed knit uh, it's like a cool treatment the necklace is is decent but it's just like very utilitarian like it's one piece i think that's kind of the point yeah these like dipped converse shoes i just don't have a lot to say i don't think hmm hmm i don't like it i really don't uh, it's just it feels like someone was told hey you've got a fashion show tomorrow and they're like oh god Oh, no, I haven't made anything. And they're just, like, throwing fabrics on people. Okay, this is the most fashion-y looking piece so far. Tailor jacket, very clean. I don't quite understand what's going on here, but it's interesting. These kind of convertible pants, you get a better look at them there. I don't hate the idea. 
but I'm like being very generous with that. Very similar look, just sleeveless, just kind of chopped off the sleeves. Like, hey, um, we need more looks. Oh God, okay, uh, we have a couple versions of this blazer. Just chop, chop off those sleeves, okay? Some embellishments. Again, it just feels like they're like, oh God, we have a pair of pants. They're not interesting enough. Uh, yeah, you could put crystals on them. Very disappointing, honestly. The women's wear has some more interesting stuff going on. This is cool. Whatever this fabrication is, is very interesting. I don't love the fit of the stuff, but at least there's some thought going into it, you know? Hmm. Same thing in a different color. Sure. Why not f pad out the... Uh, Pat out the number of looks, you know what I mean? A little ring on the sweater here. Interesting type of knit going on here. The way that weaves move around around the neck and shoulders is kind of cool. The skirt is feels like such an afterthought. Cool sweater. I like the cutout. The chain's nice. But then it's like the same pants, the same shoes that we've been seeing. Like, okay. Elevated basics, you know what I mean? Uh, damn. This is pretty dire. And there's like barely even any menswear. Oh my god. Oh, it's a mess. I'm done. I'm just, I'm not feeling it. All right, that was super tough. I didn't expect that, honestly. Jill Sander, okay, right here. It's not a B. It's not. There were very few saving graces here either. I think the question is... Oh, God. I think it's in that space with, like, an Amiri, where it's like, I can see why people want to wear it, but it didn't feel like there was anything going on under the hood. If you interrogate those clothes, I don't think they have anything to say. It's just unfortunate. I was hoping for much more there. All right, next up, hopefully, hoping for better things here, because we've got Undercover, which is some people's favorite brand, many people's favorite brand super respected. I have never dove in quite deep enough to be like a super fan or anything, but I'm definitely looking forward to this. Let's see what's going on here. All right, we've not yet had a fall collection here seemingly, but we've got spring 2023. I'm assuming there's men in here. Oh God, that seems weird to have an undercover collection without men, but that's seemingly what we have here. There must be a more, oh, oh, I'm crazy. I didn't look far enough back. Spring 2023, menswear, fantastic. Let's take a look. Okay, look one. Very wearable. Um, zippers are definitely in right now, apparently. We've got some kind of like Vans ripoff sneakers. It's nice, but uh, kind of a tame opening look, I would say. We've got it in a, like a different color, maybe even different fabrication. Looks a little bit more casual puckered cotton hmm okay interesting interesting hyper wearable kind of like norm core these remind me of those balenciaga sneakers tennis sneakers that have the logo around the the vulcanized sole hmm kind of boring but it's not bad okay layered sweaters i like the color i like the wrap nice scarf matching with the pants pants look hella comfy. I do like this scarf neck detailing. That seems like a slight novelty, you know, kind of playful, but very like streetwear. You know what I mean? This is my kind of pants right here. These are the type of types of pants that I like to wear. I come from the, the skinny jeans era. You know what I mean? So I, that just hits my eye, right? I understand. And I'm on board with the, the baggy pants craze that we're going through right now, but Deep down, I think I'll always be a skinny guy, you know? So I'm glad that Undercover is championing that. I'm wondering when it's going to pick up a notch, if it is going to pick up a notch. I kind of want to get to that point because this is very, very casual, but loud. I'll give you that. Nice pants again. Nice boots as well. I don't love the super striking red tartan check, although the top half doesn't do it for me. I like these hyper distressed jeans though. It does feel like a kind of um, timid collection so far. Yeah, timid's the, the right word, I think. 
That's not very timid. Tetes. Some tasteful tete. Um, you know how I feel about matchy matchy pattern two pieces. It's just not my vibe. All right, we're getting the leather coming in, but still a very like classic and kind of expected cut. Uh, the sneakers haven't changed all that much. Getting in some yellow with the jacket, very like um, Akira kind of thing, you know? Okay, we've got like a an ironic vetment style t-shirt. I don't, they don't look good, but they look comfortable, the shorts, I'll give them that. But I've gotta say, I'm kind of disappointed here. Weird that they're leaning so heavily into streetwear when other brands are veering away from it at warp speed. Rebel Gods, hyper casual, weird. Weird collection, that's nice. I like the polo with the cardigan, super matchy matchy, but whatever. Good pants too, I like the panel in there and some nice chunky boots. I cannot hate on that, but I really am like, cherry picking for good things to say because for the most part it's it's fairly staid and boring we're getting into a slightly different vibe here now though this this is a cool layering on the sleeves they're all like good looks if you saw any of these people on the street you'd be like oh that's a well-dressed person but does it necessarily look like hyper fashionable no although i like these pants a lot interesting yeah, just kind of a, a tweener collection for them. Kind of feels like biding their time. Very street, stuff like this. It's going to speak to your average, you know, supreme buyer, things like that. And I get, you know, there's a market for it. But it just kind of, it is what it is. Let's leave it there. All right, undercover. It was fine. I don't know. So, Come to Garçon was interesting, but it wasn't necessarily good. Gucci was pretty boring. I'm going to put it like right above Palm Angels because Palm Angels was actually similar, like all very wearable, but none of it like great. And that's what that undercover collection felt like to me. So I think that's fair. All right, let's do one more. Let's look at Marnie, the knit kings of the luxury world. Kind of, I feel like people who are into like Bode really like Marnie. I haven't looked at a runway show in a bit though. So let's dig in. I do not know where they keep the menswear. So let's see if there's any in this spring 2023 show here. We get a women's wear look as our cover look. And I'm seeing a lot of women here, but then look seven. Nope, that's not menswear. That's very rude of me. Okay, we've got, oh, we do have men. Okay, the very next look, I think. Cut out tank. And it's kind of like Rick Owensy banana knit, but much more like cocktail-y. I guess. Interesting. Okay, very bright, very like Cies Marjan, you know? I like this cropped open knit. I I've always liked an open knit, and I like that they're like going for it with the colors. I feel like you don't see enough of that, you know what I mean? That's nice. Interesting. Super interesting knits and pants. They're going for it, at the very least. This looks rough, though. The big hole in the chest feels kind of gross. And it's it's kind of hard to make out like what the pants are as well. Ooh, that ain't it, chief. That ain't it. I get why they thought it would be good, but you'd be hard pressed to find anybody who'd want to wear that out into the world. You know what I mean? Yeah, I really don't like the like neck chest sweaters. It's a cool jacket though. This like coated canvas I'm guessing in, in this like cream leathery color. Um, there's a lot going on though. And then these upturned shoes, like ballet shoes are very weird. This kind of gives me like old school Gucci vibes that like vibrancy, which is fun to see because there aren't a lot of people doing that anymore. This is very interesting. I like the, the hominess of it. It feels like something somebody could make on their own if they were so inclined. The bottom half feel is a bit of an afterthought, but it's a very interesting treatment for the top. And I like interesting. I give credit for interesting. You know what I mean? It's a very cool jacket. Very, very cool. Loud, very loud. 
but cool. And, hmm, I like the sort of classical nature of the shoes, the upturned toe. Yeah, I'm not mad about it. Hmm, that's a bit night at the disco for me. Doesn't do it for me. Now the loudness starts to hurt my eyes and the matchy matchiness is a whole thing, you know? Cut off sweater, this is cool up here. This like mohair and how it falls away. But then it turns into the fishnet and I just don't fully understand. And then into this like denim uh, skirt, floor length skirt. Another one of these coated jackets in black. Looks just as nice in black. Interesting type of dye or maybe even the fabrication on the pants. More of that. I don't know. I like that they're doing something. So I think I'm going to give credit there, even though it's just not fully my thing. Oh, man, the floor length coat in this fur, faux fur of some kind. I like what they want to be. I see the vision of themselves in their head, and that's worth something. All right, Marnie. Uh, man, what to make of that? I don't think it was necessarily good, but it had more of an identity and a point of view than really anything in the clearance bin. So that instantly bumps it up, at least into the C tier. And I think it was better than any of this stuff on this bottom row here. So we're up into the C tier. And I think we're starting to get into this territory here. I think it was just in a similar vein of that Alex thing, where there's a point of view, there's a customer for it, I think, and there are ideas. There's something going on up in that head of theirs. So it's, it's a solid upper C tier. And I think that is where we leave it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Take a look at the other video on screen here. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll see you next time.